Hi, my name is Stuart Lynch, and this is the seventh and final video in the My Images Core Data Series. In this video, we'll be configuring our persistent container so that it will synchronize our core data entity to CloudKit. This means that you'll be able to run the app on all of your devices that are signed into your iCloud account and be able to create, view, update, and delete your image objects, including the images, and have those updates synchronized across all devices. I love getting your feedback, so tap the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video and leave a comment below. Make sure you subscribe to the video and ring that bell to get notifications of new videos. And if you want to support my work, you can buy me a coffee. First, let me be clear, I'm not an expert, and this is all new to me. I've done a lot of research on this subject and sometimes have received conflicting advice, so some of what I will be showing you may be redundant. However, as a former colleague of mine used to say about the software that our company developed, it just works. So who am I to argue? By the end of this video, your My Images application will sync across all of your devices. If you're a more experienced developer and can offer more insight, please leave comments and references so we can all learn from my mistakes. I'll leave links to all of my references in the description. Well, as I said in the intro, this is the seventh video in the series. If you've been following along with me, you can continue from where you left off. If you're just jumping in here, you can download the completed project from video 6 and start from there. A link is in the description. I do recommend, however, that you at least watch the previous video so that you can get an understanding of how the application is constructed. And this is how it works right now, so let me just demo it. And I'm going to start by running this on my iPhone, so let me run the app and bring it into view. If you're going to continue along with me in this video, you must have a paid iOS developer account because you'll need access to CloudKit. As you can see, I currently have three images stored in the SQLite database that Core Data is managing. I can tap on the New Image button and select a new image from my photo album. I'm required to add at least an image name before I can save it. And when I do that and save, the record gets inserted as a new Core Data record. I can also select any image and share it with others by providing my name and then addressing it in the mail form. The attachment is the JSON and image zipped up together with a special extension that is recognized by our application. So when a recipient receives the email and they have the application installed, they can double click on the attachment and then they'll be prompted to open the app where it will get inserted into their database. We covered all that in our last video. I'm going to be keeping this functionality of sharing the same, but what will be different is where the data is stored. It will be stored not only on the device in Core Data, but also in iCloud so that it will be available to all of my devices. And I think the best way for you to deal with this is to delete the current version of the app from your phone or simulator first. If you want to try and force existing My Images to sync with CloudKit, you have to do a lot more work. The issue is that the original NS Persistent container did not have history tracking enabled, thus only new created objects or updated objects would get pushed to iCloud. So basically if you're going to offer core data or CloudKit syncing in your app, it's best to have that in mind from the start. Good news for us though is that 99% of our code is still valid. The first thing that we're going to do is make sure that our application is enabled to use CloudKit. Then the process for this is to select the Signing in Capabilities tab with our application target selected. I'm going to drop down the Signing Chevron and make sure that my bundle ID represents my own domain. You can't use my Createch domain, so make sure yours is changed here. Next, click on the plus button beside Capability and search for iCloud, and then add it. Once it's been added, click on the CloudKit checkbox. Now copy your bundle ID to the clipboard, and then tap the Container Sections plus button, and then paste in that bundle identifier. And what this will do is it will append iCloud in front of your bundle identifier to create the CloudKit container. Now I've already done this as I was testing this in development, 
So you can see my CloudKit container is already here. So I'm just going to check on it. For you, if the items are in red, just keep tapping that refresh button a few times until your CloudKit container is recognized and your screen looks like this. Next, we'll need to add another capability. So again, click on the plus next to capability. And this time, search for background modes. With that added, check background fetch and remote notifications. Now there is a button for CloudKit console, and we'll get into that near the end of this video. But for now, our app has not yet communicated with CloudKit, and it has no idea what our core data schema is. So currently, our persistent container in our My Images Container class is for core data only. And if we make some simple changes now, we can start to enable synchronizing with CloudKit. So let's first, let's just rename persistent container to persistent CloudKit container. And this will change the property name in our class where there are four instances of that and in the app entry where we access our view context from the CloudKit container. And then we'll change the name of our type to NS Persistent CloudKit container in the declaration here, and then again in the initializer. Well, prior to loading the persistent stores, we'll need to do a couple of other things. We'll need to be able to track all CRUD operations, even when we're offline. So in order to do that, we'll need to set an option for Persistent CloudKit container. So we'll use a guardlet to find the first description and assign it to a description property. If that fails, we can't proceed any further anyway, so we'll create a fatal error where we'll just specify failed to initialize Persistent container. With that done now, we can access the set option method on the description and then provide an option for any number of keys. Well, the key that we want is the NS Persistent History Tracking key. If I option click on this key, we'll see that the default is set for history tracking to be disabled. So we'll need to provide a option that is going to enable it. Well, the problem is that this requires an NS object. So I'm going to assign true because that's what I want to do. I want to enable it by setting it to true, but I'm told that it's not an NS object. Well, it turns out that Swift bridges between NS number class, which is an NS object, and Swift numeric and Boolean types. So we can simply cast true as an NS number and we'll be just fine. The second thing we need to do is to let our container's view context know what our merge policy will be if it perceives a conflict. For example, if your different devices are offline and each makes a different update to the same record. If we option click on this, we see that the NS error merge policy is the default. Let me just drill down a little bit and see what my options are. The one that's recommended is this second one here that I've highlighted and it'll apply changes that are currently in memory, i.e. the active changes on the device you are working on. So we'll set our persistent CloudKit containers view context merge policy to be NS merge by property object trump merge policy. And then we'll need to set the view context automatically merge changes from parent property to true. Well, there's just one more thing we need to do. Open your data model and select the default configuration and display the attributes panel and then check use with CloudKit. That's it. So let's test this. And I found that by testing on my device first, I get better success immediately. So make sure that your previous version of the My Images core data is deleted and let's run the app on your phone. I'm going to bring mine up here into view, and when I tap on the new image now, I'm presented with my own photos album, so I can choose from there. I'm going to choose this photo of my dog and add some form field information. I see all sorts of activity in the console, indicating to me that we are communicating with my CloudKit container 
to add this object to CloudKit as well as my core data. Let me add one more image now. How about this photo I took of my Christmas tree with the candles lit on Christmas Eve? Well, let me stop now, and if I open up this console a bit, you can see that there is all sorts of CloudKit activity being logged. So I know that there has been communication with CloudKit, but will it sync with my other devices? Well, let me open my iPhone 14 Pro simulator right now and make sure that I do not have any copies of this application currently on that simulator. Well, it doesn't look like I do, so this is good. However, before I can sync, CloudKit needs to know who I am, so I'll have to log into the simulator using the same account that I was logged into with my phone. So if you go to the Settings app, you can sign into the simulator using your iCloud account, the same one that you've used in your iPhone. To speed things up, don't merge contacts or freeform. Now let's run the app on the simulator, and as it first launches, you'll see that there are no images. However, the console starts to log all sorts of activity, and eventually, you'll see all of the new stuff showing up on your console. This is all CloudKit chatter where it's looking for new content. So what's happened is that through history tracking, it knows that we have not received those images yet. So it will synchronize all of those existing images with my core data database. And so that if I'm not connected to the internet after this, those records will still be available to me as they're stored locally now. Well, let me bring my iPhone back into view now. And on the simulator, I'm going to add a new image. Well, because I'm logged into iCloud, I'll again see all the images from my account now here in the simulator. Let me add this one of this freak snowstorm we had in Vancouver in December. Again, when I add this image, I see all sorts of activity in the console. And eventually, it appears on my iPhone as well. Perfect. Let me delete the image of my dog on the simulator. You see, pretty quickly, it gets removed from my iPhone as well. It looks like syncing is working. One thing to be aware of, however, is that your simulator can't receive notifications from iCloud. For example, let me create a new image on my iPhone. I'm going to choose this rainbow that I saw in Maui when I was there in early December. I'm going to save it, but I can wait forever and it won't show up in my simulator until I stop and restart it. Because as I said, that simulator can't receive notifications and watch for changes. Once it's restarted, the rainbow picture appears. Let's finish this video off then by checking out the CloudKit dashboard to see what's going on in that end. Open the app and select your target and go to the Signing and Capabilities tab. Click on the CloudKit console and you'll be asked to log into your developer account if you're not already. I am, so I see my CloudKit dashboard right away. I'm going to click on the CloudKit database, and I'm going to make sure that I'm looking at the correct container, which in my case is this one for this app. In the list, you see all of your current and non-hidden CloudKit databases. This CloudKit container contains all the records for all of the users of my app. And this is not a public database, however. It's a private one. So as no one else will be able to see my images, I'll need to select the private database. And when I do this, I should be able to see the records for the account that I've logged into on my phone and here in CloudKit, namely my account. So if I click on record type right now, I see two different types of records. The first being CD underscore my image. And this is our my images entity prefaced with the CD underscore. Then, if you check out the field drop-down, you'll see all of the entity's attributes prefaced with CD as well. 
so it looks like something is working anyway. Well, if I tap on Query Records, I get an error that is marked with Record name is not marked as queryable. Well, in CloudKit, a queryable record is one that can be searched for using a query. And if a record is not marked as queryable, it means that it can't be searched for using a query. Well, this is typically used to protect the privacy of certain types of data, as it means that the data can't be accessed unless you have a direct reference to a specific record. And if you're seeing the error record name is not marked as queryable, it means that you're trying to search for a record using a field that's not marked as queryable in CloudKit. And since we didn't specify any record attributes for this record, it uses the field called record name by default to present all records, but only if we had marked that as queryable, which it's not. Well, fortunately, it's an easy fix. Click on indexes, then click on cd underscore my image. And this is going to list all of the different attributes or fields that we have. And each one has three different index types, queryable, searchable, and sortable. But we're missing one for record name. So at the bottom, click on Add Basic Index. And this will give you a selection list from which you can choose record name. So let me bring this up into view now for you. And I'll select record name. And the queryable option is automatically entered for you. That's all you have to do. We'll just save the changes. Now I can make sure I've selected my records private database once more. And then click on Query Now. Now you may not see any records now either, but the error has gone away anyway. Well, you're not seeing any records for maybe a couple of reasons. Maybe because the synchronization hasn't happened yet. Or in my case, I need to change the zone to the CloudKit zone. I don't know why, but sometimes it'll change it automatically for you. But I find that if I just drop this down and choose CloudKit zone and do my query, I now am shown all three of my records, the Christmas tree, the Maui rainbow, and the snow day records. I can tap on one of the records to get to see all the metadata. So let's do that for the snow day. I see all the information and I could update a record here and it would be reflected on all of my devices. Well, let me just test deletion. So let me shrink this window a bit so I can see it and my iPhone that I'm going to bring into view now. And as I tap on the delete button, the record gets removed from CloudKit and a notification goes off to my app. And since I have my app open and I'm on my iPhone, it receives that notification and removes the image from my application. Wonderful. Well, that completes this video and the series. So I hope you've learned something and discovered some things that you may wish to add to your own projects. If you enjoyed this video and the series, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Make sure you ring the bell to get notifications of new videos. It would also help if you could use your own social media accounts whether that be on Twitter, or Mastodon, or YouTube, and give me a shout out to your followers so I can grow my audience. Thanks for watching.